I'll be talking today about uh, the promise of technology uh, from an engine manufacturer's point of view. But before I move on to the presentation, uh, the story goes that in ancient Greece, uh, Icarus made some wings that failed when he got too near to the sun. And um, a lesson, say the classicists, that we shouldn't aspire for too much. And yet, uh, that's exactly what this conference is all about. Uh, an aspiration to solve all the problems that beset the aviation industry. And uh, here's my premise before I move on to the presentation. Engine technology promises the biggest single impact on the environmental characteristics of aviation over the medium term. And when I talk about medium term, we're talking probably around the, the next 20 years or so. So with that, I could comfortably say that engine technology will reduce fuel burn. And especially in the uh, difficult environment, uh, well, economic environment uh, times that we're facing, uh, there are engine improvements that uh, can reduce fuel burn by 15, 20, even 30% compared to today's products. Uh, while at the same time uh, addressing the environmental triangle of uh, noise, NOx, and uh, CO2. But, and uh, there's always a but, um, you cannot get something for nothing. And uh, these characteristics trade with uh, one another, as most people know. Um, at the end of the day, all design is a trade between requirements, and a full understanding of the requirements is crucial to the design of the new generation of engines. And we may be coming into a time when uh, we may have to ask ourselves to choose between noise and CO2. Uh, now, engine manufacturers are not only looking at the future um, technology. We are also, for example, uh, heavily involved uh, in the search for alternative fuels. And uh, just to give you a quick background, uh, Rolls-Royce has been involved in the alternative fuel search for 15 to 20 years uh, with Sassol, CTL, with the work uh, with Shell and Airbus on uh, synthetic GTL, to the recent work with uh, Air New Zealand and uh, Boeing on hydrogenated oil. And with the ongoing work in partnership with uh, British Airways to carry out a truly based, science-based, back-to-back testing of alternative fuels on our test beds. So, although alternative fuels have a long-term promise, that promise is surrounded by questions. And uh, what exactly will the life cycle CO2 benefit be? Uh, in a world of food shortages, how do we stop feedstock competing with food production? How do we go from making a few gallons for a demonstration to do 100 million gallons uh, per day? And perhaps the hardest question of all is, does the why, why uh, does aviation would get proportionately more alternative fuel than any other industry, uh, since we only contribute 2% to the, to the emissions? Now, don't get me wrong, there's no doubt in my mind that alternative fuels have the greatest potential in the long term. But in the next 20 years, engine technology offers more with less risk or unpredictability. And that's really where I base my, uh, my presentation. And uh, that really takes me to the main focus of this presentation, which is technology. Uh, and uh, G Giovanni uh, said it at the very beginning, uh, our industry environment track record, it's incredible. You know, we've been improving our products for the last, well, for the last 100 years. And we've been uh, making massive steps into, towards improving and making them much more environmental friendly. Uh, now, uh, so aviation has a great pedigree. That's kind of the, the, the baseline. And the engine technology has a record of delivering 1% improvement in fuel, uh, fuel efficiency every single year. A good example is the first trend engine, uh, which entered in service in 1995, and uh, the, the latest engine that we're working on is 17% better than that. But this level of improvement does not come easily, and it really comes in, in four stages. And if you look at the presentation, uh, the first of all, you need to invest in ideas, uh, using the best brains around in the world in the top universities. Uh, the second, you need to invest in rigs and demonstrations. Uh, to, to be able to validate that technology. And some examples are the US-funded programs like KIT and ADVANT, and the European research projects like uh, uh, DREAM, which is a clean sky initiative. Uh, the other one that people tend to forget about is, is being match fit. 
there's nothing like competition to fire up our engineers' brains, okay? And the 787, uh, uh, the competition between Rolls-Royce and, and GE is a great example. If we didn't have that competition, we wouldn't be able to get to the level of performance that we, we are today. So uh, the, the point is, when the next big project comes along, we'll be ready and we'll hit the ground running. Uh, and the last one is, uh, only the, when the requirements are clear, then we start investing in engines and, and in the product, in the tangible product. In the meantime, what you really need to do is to make sure that you have the right technologies. I'm trying to keep to the seven minutes. It's difficult, though, I can tell you. <laughs> Uh, now, time prevents me to, uh, to, to, to discuss every single potential uh, technology, so I'll focus on the 150-seat sector. And this is a superb example of uh, the waiting for the requirements uh, to become clear. When we started this project, the requirements uh, was for 2012, and today we're looking at something around the end of the decade. Uh, clearly, to have committed to an engine architecture and technology suit for the, 2020, uh, for the 2012 requirement would have been a massive mistake. Uh, instead, we invested in a comprehensive range of technologies and we'll make the big decisions when the requirement and the environment becomes clear. And uh, we have uh, two potential routes to follow. The first one is what we call option 15 and option 20. A 15% improvement uh, by 2015, and a roughly a 1% per year uh, from then on. Uh, and this option is uh, relatively low risk, uh, is based on fully proven architectures. Uh, you will recognize these numbers uh, because uh, all the engine manufacturers are bidding advanced to both funds that deliver improvements uh, around this level. Just as an aside, uh, you'll see that we and, uh, in fact, GE don't need uh, to add a gearbox uh, into our engines to get this level of improvement. Uh, we have looked at that technology since it first appeared in the 70s, uh, and uh, then regularly since, and frankly, it changes uh, nothing. Uh, the second one, and this one is the one that really our engineers get really excited about it. Uh, it's, uh, and if you want, uh, it's really the true game changer, is the open rotor. Uh, back in the 80s, uh, we flew an unsophisticated concept demonstrator. Uh, the physics showed promise, but, uh, we, uh, but we had the issues which were left unaddressed. Uh, today, um, we are in a very different place. The open road has moved from being a pure physics problem to an engineering challenge. And guess what? That's what we do best, is trying to solve all these very technical challenges uh, problems. So where are we? Well, uh, we've run the technology into sets of tests, into uh, test facilities, uh, one low-speed facility in Holland and a, a high-speed facility in the UK. Uh, we run a set of configurations to determine the optimum, and uh, although we have a long way to go, I'm able to share where we believe we are today. And if you look at uh, option 30 or open rotor, the current position, you can see that uh, we will be able to attain 25 to 30% better efficiency than current uh, um, turbofans, 10 to 15% uh, better efficiency than any advanced turbofan. And uh, contrary to uh, the, the popular belief, it will be quieter than today's aircraft. Uh, and uh, we can achieve 20% lower NOx versus any advanced turbofan. So quite significant uh, values here. Now, uh, some people are naysayers about open water technology, uh, and we are the first to say there is a way to go, there's still some way to go. But we don't believe we can afford not to pursue this technology. So I'm getting to the end. Um, open water, um, could that be a, an environmental program at the national scale? Well, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, if you look at it, 30% less fuel means 30% less CO2. And uh, we got some of our analysts to run some numbers just to, to kind of try to understand the impact in a much more tangible way. And the fact is, a single open rotor powered aircraft saves the same amount of CO2 as planting 250,000 trees during its lifetime. 250,000 trees. That's a lot of trees. Uh, if, if you apply that to the entire fleet, that would be around the same size of four times the area of Switzerland. So I think the message is clear. Um, the bottom line is uh, that engine technology 
does deliver, as Giovanni said, you know, aviation will deliver, and we do believe engine technology does deliver. And uh, Rolls-Royce has the options covered.